Well, my older brother is the favorite in the family. Everybody loves him and just wants to give him so many opportunities. Luckily for me, my grandparents are the only ones that deeply care about me. So they decide to pay for my entire college. Well, how do they give me the money? They sent it to my parents, and my parents have wasted it away on my brother, who, by the way, absolutely hates college, and now he's flunking out, and I can't even afford to go anywhere. Well, fast forward. Years and years go by, and I get very successful. My parents cut me off, but they hear about my success. It turns out they got a loan and opened up a very expensive restaurant that my brother was managing. And guess what? Yeah, it flunked too. So now they're coming back to me saying, hey, we hear how successful you are and we need you to help us get out of debt. Yeah, do you believe that? Well, this is what I decide to tell them. I feel conflicted and at the same time angry at my parents for their actions. A bit of a backstory to help you understand my point of view. In the suburban city of South Carolina, I live in a well-kept apartment along with my older brother, Will, and my parents, Joanne and Max. My parents had a college love story. They met each other in college and got married right after graduation. And had Will. <laughs> Five years later, in an unplanned pregnancy, as my mother would come to tell me, they had me. I don't exaggerate when I say that my parents always preferred Will over me from quite a young age. I observe the love my parents exhibited towards Will compared to the love and affection that they would show me. Will always got the toys he wanted without having to ask twice. And when I would ask for them, I was always met with the reply that we could not afford them at the moment, so I would have to wait until next week or so. The same routine repeated next week, and I would play with Will's toys as he seemed too lazy to not care about them after two days or three. Joanne and Max had enrolled us both in District High School, which had cost a chunk of their savings. My grandparents frequently paid us visits, and it was on these visits that they, like many others, would notice how my parents treated me. Joanne and Max asked me to do chores while... Will relaxed on the couch with my parents. They also noticed small gestures that my parents exhibited only towards Will, like cleaning up after him or asking him what he wanted to eat, but never me. My grandparents, witnessing this, felt pity towards me and wanted to take me back home to live with them, but my parents, fearing how they would make them look in society, declined the offer. When asked about how my parents, with their low-paying jobs, would save up for my and my brother's college, they said we would have to work on our wits to get into college. My grandparents took me to the side as they were leaving one day and told me in secret that they would set up the college fund in my name and since they did not have anything but each other, a huge chunk of their savings would go into the fund. Well, I was overjoyed as I felt for what was the first time in my life that somebody actually did care about me. I mean, my parents' focus on my brother meant that they were too busy to care for me or teach me what a parent does to their child. This led to me growing up in mischief, and I was a naughty kid, as everybody called it. I would play pranks, stay in detention, and even create a ruckus around the house. It seemed like karma when I had contracted a deadly case of Lyme disease. Even though I was mischievous, I was rather a brilliant student, never failing to turn an assignment in, and so, when I fell ill, I was crestfallen about missing class and schoolwork. The disease had me bedridden for three months until I finally recovered. It reflected my grades, and I ended up failing in my junior year. My parents had only told me to work harder and get good grades to pass again in my repeating year, paying no heed to the disease that I've just gone through. One morning when I was in my senior year of high school, as I sat down in my room and opened up my laptop to fill out my college application, well, I got a call from my grandparents. They often did this just to check up on me to see how I was doing and as I had taken my failure in junior year pretty hard on myself. 
I asked them about the college fund and how much money they saved up so I could apply to the right colleges. I noticed a shadow out of the corner of my eye, and when I turned to look, I noticed my mom standing at the doorway. She had been listening to the conversation between me and my grandparents. What was a well-kept secret between me and my grandparents had now came out. My mom rushed to her room and slammed the door loud enough to shake the portraits off the wall. Later, she would call my grandparents and ask them why they had only set up a college fund for me and not my brother, Will. After a lot of retaliation from my parents, they had come to accept my grandparents' decision of creating a college fund just for me. As the year came to a close and I was graduating soon, I asked my grandparents to release the college fund money to me so I could pay for my college fees when I get the acceptance letter. I had applied to Stanford and only hoped I was lucky enough to get in as I was confident about my grades. And the essay on how I pulled myself and got excellent grades after failing due to my disease would be a ballpark home run. When asked, my grandparents told me that they released the college fund to my parents just a day ago. Well, apparently, Joanne and Max had contacted them and asked them to do so as... They said they wanted to now step in and be present in my life more. My grandparents had appreciated the step that they were taking and wanting to be more involved and without a second thought, trusting their daughter and son-in-law. Released my college fund money to my parents. I mean, I was overjoyed and did not suspect anything that could possibly go wrong. In a week, I received acceptance to my letter from Stanford and I had gotten in. My hard work and perseverance were now giving me the fruits that would lead to success. I went to my parents to talk about my achievement. However, they did not seem interested in what I had to say. They told me how my older brother, Will, had gotten into an Ivy League and would be starting college soon, so they would have a lot to do before they send him off. I was absolutely appalled, to say the least. My brother had failed high school, and after two tries or so, his grades were far off from the ones he would need to get into an Ivy. I pushed my parents to tell me more about how my brother had gotten into an expensive high-rise college. Well, they blatantly told me about how they used my college fund money to enroll him, and would later take loans to pay for the remaining year's fee. Well, I was enraged. My parents had blackmailed my grandparents into giving them the money that was meant for me. This meant I could no longer pay for the college that I've gotten into with my own efforts. I screamed at Jane and Max and told them about how I would be going to a lawyer and ensuring I got my money back. Every single penny. My parents do not pay heed to my empty threats and, well... Tired of my constant pestering, decided they had had enough of me and kicked me out. I was out on the streets, with nearly a penny in my pocket, trying to find a way to get to my grandparents in the only place I had that I could call home. With the help of some friends, I was finally able to get to them. And as soon as my grandmother opened that door, I ran into her arms and broke down. My grandparents tried to console me with concerned looks on their face, and they asked me what I was doing here all by myself, and I told them what my parents have done, how they have tricked my grandparents into giving them the money they needed, and bought Will a seat in college. A seat that was deserved by a hard-working student such as me. My grandfather called my dad and had what looked like a heated argument with him over the phone. He ended the call and shook his head in dismay. My grandparents made me a warm cup of tea and listened to my woes about Joanne and Max. There was nothing else they could do as the money had now been transferred to Will's college, and there's no way of getting it back. My grandparents could afford a lawyer, but I saw no point in going after Joanne and Max. They had kicked me out, and deep down I was happy that they've done so. And I was finally out of their lives and their world that just revolved around my brother, Will. 
My grandparents provided me with a place to stay and advised me to take a gap year and reapply next year when they could save the money up for my college. I was thankful to them and sent a reply back to Stanford on how I could not pay the fees due to unforeseen personal circumstances and would not be able to attend this year. Stanford, to my surprise, sent a reply back stating that they would be regretful at losing a brilliant student. And so, they decided to cut back my fees and pass it off as a scholarship discount. They also gave me a month's time to arrange the initial fees, and I could get into the lateral entry program after paying it. I ran to my grandparents with the good news, who could seem so proud of me, and I offered to work part-time at restaurants and cafes as a server and help my grandparents in saving up the money to pay for my fees. My parents had left me alone to fend for myself, but my grandparents had my back. I started my year at Stanford, and applause and appreciation poured in from my family. When Jane and Max got wind of my success, they called relatives and spun the story about me and Will. They told everyone how my grandparents had helped pay for my college and refused to do the same for Will and were playing favorites. While they, my parents, worked hard and with Will's excellent grades, he's gotten into an Ivy League college. I mean, I just turned a deaf ear to what my parents or anyone believed them to even be saying. Well, let's fast forward. Three years later, I was in a position I dreamed myself to be. I had been offered a position in a startup and the pay was exceptional. I could afford to look after my grandparents as well as return the money that they invested in me. Stanford had given me a scholarship after just one year, based on my exceptional grades, so I didn't even have to pay for the remainder of the course. My grandparents, however, well, had an untimely death, and passed away in peace, leaving me to grieve in the aftermath of their death, and I had held a small funeral at my home, which they had left me with their will. I invited my parents out of courtesy, but they failed to show up. I was saddened at that, though, uh, that even after years, they held a grudge against me and my grandparents. As I was working late one day, the ping of my email startled me. I picked up my phone to recognize a familiar name on the screen. The screen lit up with the words Billy on it. You see, Billy was a close friend of mine and Will's from when he was six. He was also our cousin and had been there for me at my grandparents' funeral and consoled me when my parents had failed to show up. Billy texted me asking to meet up the next day as he had news of the Will and my parents. I was in a conflict as I had decided long ago that I wanted nothing to do with them. But my curiosity peaked and got the best of me and... I decided to hear what Billy had to say, and I replied with the time and the name of the cafe that we could meet up at. Billy showed up panting and greeted me with a smile on his face, and he asked me how I was doing and how I was holding up with the grieving process and my internship at the startup company. I told him the ache of losing one's grandparents, the sole guardians who have looked after me when I literally had nobody. Well, it was still afresh, but with time, I was healing. I also told him how I was looking for a promotion at my company, and Billy was overjoyed at the news and congratulated me on it. He told me he had news of where Will had turned up, and I paid close attention to what he had to say. Will, Joanne, and Max did not have any second thoughts after they had kicked me out of my own home. They instead focused all their attention on Will. Will had been too lazy to care about the college that he was joining, and he only focused on the amenities, the college. <laughs> well, Joanne and Max had enrolled him and provided. After the first exams at his college, which Will ended up failing, by the way, he dropped out, wasting my college fund money, and my parents had been disappointed in his decision to do so and asked Will about his plan in building his career. Will did have a plan in mind. He had planned to take numerous loans and open a rather high-strung restaurant for people of upper class. The restaurant would have perks that could be enjoyed after paying a hefty sum of money. It was something that only the rich favored and would work in Will's favor. 
he would get the profit while the rich enjoyed the luxury. Will had asked Joanne and Max and help him just to acquire the loans, and they were more than happy to do so. However, after a month or so, the quality of service at Will's new restaurant began to rapidly decline. While other restaurants would see a rise in profits after analyzing spending and upgrading services, Will was doing the complete opposite. He employed a chef and a handful of servers at a low rate and had them working overtime. The chef, who was handed over a Michelin star, orders to prepare, was not able to cope with the resulting food barely being edible. Customers started leaving bad reviews, and in just a month's time, Will's restaurant was a barren as a desert. While Will failed at his career, I had worked hard to get into college through a scholarship. I had focused on acquiring a fine polishing of my skills, and Later joined a startup, and due to my skilled work, I am the maid chief financial officer, CFO, of the company, earning a very fat salary. Will had a restaurant that was churning out bland food and more debt while I was enjoying the perks of my position. So, I thanked Billy for the information, and he took my side when he said it was karma getting back at Will and my parents, who... Now we're falling into debt because of the loans that they've taken. Billy and I talked for ages about our future plans and family gossip until I bid him farewell as it's been getting late. Time flies fast when you're with your close friends or family. It had not been a week until my meeting with Billy when my phone rang for the ninth time that week. I recognized the number well as I had memorized it long ago. It was my parents. They called to tell me that they heard of my success from our relatives. and oh, I was curt with them and asked my parents what they wanted and what's the purpose of this call. My mother, Joanne, went on a long rant on how Will's restaurant had been a wonderful business idea. But it's just failing due to fake reviews about the restaurant. They also mentioned how they had to take numerous loans in their names just to help Will fund his restaurant. They talked of my success and applauded me for it. Their next words did not fail to surprise me, and I was dismayed. My parents told me how they had well, missed having me in their lives and asked for me to help in paying their debt, and to help in Will's business as I had sufficient experience. In doing so, I could come live with them and also have a share in my brother's restaurant. I saw through their actions and did not want to beat around the bush. I told them that they had bet on the wrong horse and to never contact me again. I hung up on them before they could get another word in. Now, I'm feeling conflicted about what I've done. As at the end of the day, well, you know, they are still family. So here I am, asking all of you whether my action towards cutting off my family in all senses and not helping them when they were in debt was wrong. So my question is, am I the a-hole? What's up, everybody? Mr. Redditto here. A family drama is today's story. Well, there is an update. Just one, but oh boy. Sit down and prepare yourself, because this one's going to knock your socks off. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for daily videos, and let's jump into the update. It's been a long time since my last post, and a lot of stuff has happened. Here's a detailed update on what happened, or, well, to get you all to this date. When Will got wind of how I hung up on our parents after they had asked for my help, he called me to yell at me for doing such, and... He said I did not deserve to be called their son after my demeanor. He threatened to sabotage my name at my company, and I told him to go ahead, try it, as I knew he did not have any means to harm me in any way, much less that I had any dirt in my name in the company, unlike he did at his restaurant. Over the past few weeks, Bill tried to get in contact with employees that worked underneath me, including some of my interns who were hesitant in their interactions with him. He tried finding any bad review or any of my mistakes that would help in being the fuel for his revenge against me. He was trying hard to find solid evidence that would make the company fire me from my post as chief financial officer, but there was none. 
I chuckled as to how hard my brother tried to get his petty revenge on me and was failing terribly at it. But his antics had seemed to have given me an idea of my own. Since neither Will nor Joanne and Max was willing to step away and let me be, I decided to take matters into my hands and devise a plan of revenge against them. That would push them away once and for all. I would be glad to never face them again. I saw Will outside my office after work one day, and he had been conversing with my lawyer and tried to persuade him to disclose personal details about me. Little did he know that earlier in the week, <laughs> I informed everybody, boss, colleagues, interns, even my lawyer, that everybody needs to know about Will and how they were to expect a nuisance from him. My company heeded my words and supported me and helped pay Richard, my lawyer, well, his fees. I decided to start collecting statements from Will's chef, whom he had employed at his restaurant. When the chef recognized me as Will's brother, she had no clue about the animosity between two brothers and offered me a rather expensive experience at Will's restaurant. To top it off, it was one on the house for me, free, <laughs> as I was a family member. I secretly recorded how the chef made food in a very, very unprofessional way. And I also recorded Will's servers and how they treated customers, which was bad, to say the least. I needed to look into my brother's bank account to provide a solid piece of evidence that would discredit him. And I had hit the jackpot. In front of me lays bills and papers that stated how Will had lost money earned in the casino and had been delaying paying our parents' dues for months. Well, I clicked pictures of my document that would be important to help me. And one day, I decided to investigate further Will's behavior with his clients. I dressed up in disguise and Will did not recognize me as I sat in a far corner, observing him and others. Will proceeded to walk in and absolutely lose his temper at customers for not paying the high rates for his crappy food. That had been prepared by his chef. The customers and Will got into a streaming match and parted ways when they saw others looking in their direction. I also recorded behind-the-scene clips of how the food was being prepared in a very unhygienic manner. That would make people sick if they've seen it. Will was turning away the few customers he was getting with his arrogance, and I decided to do something. I posted the clips online with a very, very detailed post. That would say why anyone should just, well, avoid Will's restaurant if they did not want to fall sick or have a bad experience. The videos testified to Will and his staff's behavior with customers. Not long after my post, which had gone viral in just a day or two, food creditors showed up and shut Will's restaurant down. Revoking his food license... He could now no longer run his restaurant and had failed in his business. Customers and people online would be bombarded him with mean comments. And Will invited me over to his house to confront me about the post. I showed up, armed with Richard. And I told him how I did not mean any harm, but wanted to protect customers from getting sick. Will did not trust my words. And we proceeded to argue until our parents intervened and... They asked me to get out, never show my face around them again. They told me how disappointed they were in me for destroying my brother's career and how I had not changed a bit from my mischievous activities and now they had cost my brother his livelihood and my parents had no way to pay off the loans now. Well, my brother did not have the means to fight back with a lawyer and so his threats just fell empty. I'd been feeling conflicted over the past few days, but I know I did right in finally standing up for myself. And After all, was it not my brother who was trying to sabotage my career, well, by trying to spew dirt on my name first? I'd only returned the favor and showed him how it felt to lose something that was yours. Alright, so this story was pretty crazy, but there was a few comments that say, OP, you went a little too far. I mean, you're not only hurting your older brother, which I can kind of understand, but you're also dragging your parents down since they're the ones that paid for this loan and they're the ones ultimately who are going to suffer 
when the restaurant fails and you help that restaurant fail, all right. But then there's other commenters who are saying, oh no, the restaurant was actually run very poorly and it was getting people sick. The way the chef was preparing the food, using food over and over for various nights. No, 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 that's unacceptable. So I want to ask you guys, where do you fall with those two comments or are you kind of in the middle? Let me know your opinion. Drop it in the comment section down below. I want to thank you for joining me on today's video. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Redito. I read stories every single day and animate them as well. So stop on by tomorrow, see what we're up to. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and just remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.